A very good evening to you. I'm Pearson Bowen. It will take about $300 million to take care of all of government's needs in the remaining financial year. And Central Bank Governor Dr. Delisle Worrell says the funds will come from different sources. Government financing needs for the remaining three quarters of the current fiscal year are projected to be about $300 million. This is to be financed by commercial banks' surplus of funding over the credit needs of the private sector, the surplus of the NIS, and funds from the non-bank financial institutions. Dr. Worrell also revealed the levels of debt to state-owned entities like the QEH and BNOC. Government currently holds $97 million in payments outstanding to major state-owned enterprises, including the QEH, UWI, the Waste Separation Plant, the Barbados Agricultural Marketing Corporation and the Barbados National Oil Company with respect to expenses incurred in fiscal year 2013-2014. Specific funding arrangements will be made to eliminate these arrears in collaboration with the companies and institutions to which payments are outstanding. But well, the Barbados Economic Society is dismissing suggestions of growth this year in the Barbados economy. President Jeremy Stevens says despite projections of a 0.3% growth this year by the central bank, he doesn't expect the economy to expand. Growth would not occur as quickly as possible because a number of questions, or less, sorry, a number of questions are addressed. And one namely being another, the, what they refer to as another tentacle of the recovery plan of Barbados and a lot of that had to do with the issue of foreign direct investment being put into or rather brought in to facilitate uh, the let's say the beginning or rather the construction phases of several projects the Pierhead Marina being one the Sugar Point project being another major one and others about five or so and though some mention was made to a few of them the, we still haven't at least gotten the sense from the report whether the start dates are imminent. And the opposition BLP's economic advisor, Dr. Clyde Maskell, says the government's fiscal adjustment plan has failed to deliver or achieve any of its objectives. He says there is no evidence of economic growth as there are no improvements in the driving sectors in spite of a barrage of taxes and unemployment. The unemployment rate has to be over 13% in the face of 3,000 public sector job losses in the first quarter of this year. The central bank's foreign reserves declined by 51 million in spite of the foreign borrowing of almost 450 million between, 20, between December 2013 and the first quarter of 2014. In September of last year, the central bank said that the fiscal adjustment package provided a platform for economic growth. This is at variance with what most economists believe. Well, during his second quarter review of the economy yesterday, Central Bank Governor Dr. Delal Worrell predicted 0.3% growth in the Barbados economy this year. He says the expected growth is based on a forecast of performance in the foreign exchange sectors. Dr. Worrell also expects the economy to pick up in subsequent years to 1.2% in 2015 and 2.5% growth in 2016. Well, watch out for sexual predators preying on children on the internet, especially on social media. The warning from Social Care Minister Steve Blackett, he remains concerned that too many Barbadians are still turning a blind eye to issues related to child sexual abuse. That's why he wants parents to be extra vigilant when children are using laptops, tablets, mobile phones and similar devices. We must be mindful of the impact of technology on the emotions and sexual health of our children. The internet is used to create awareness and excitement to draw some children into chat rooms that have pedophiles and other types of individuals who do not have their best interest at heart. The new iPhone, other types of cell phones and tablets are used in sexting 
and these actions can have long-term consequences. The Social Care Minister made the remarks during the opening of a workshop dubbed Break the Silence and Child Sexual Abuse, hosted by the Child Care Board at the Hilton Barbados this morning. He also aligned what government is doing to meet the requirements of the Bridgetown Declaration, an agenda set out by UNICEF to combat child sexual abuse. Barbados, along with other Caribbean nations, pledged, among other things, to encourage the inclusion of child sexual abuse on the agenda of ministries of health, education and justice, develop awareness raising strategies of protection measures and the rights of children among persons in such areas as education, health, social protection and the religion and in the fields of judicial and law enforcement, sports, culture and leisure who come into contact with children on a regular basis and also to guarantee that mandatory reporting and follow-up on child sexual abuse by all professionals working with children in fully realized, is fully realized by the year 2015. And Chairman of the Child Care Board, Ken Knight, believes there is a greater need for professional training for counselors who deal with cases of child sexual abuse. He says skills are also needed when dealing with children who are victims of sexual abuse. Many children are sexually abused every year in this island, and as a result, they experience challenges throughout their lives. Therefore, every effort must be made to make the process of disclosure and treatment as professional and friendly as possible. These skills are obtained through training workshops such as these. Well, plans for this Friday's MQI Banks Lime Pick of the Crop semifinals at the Wilder Gymnasium are progressing smoothly. Coordinator Aja says the stage is literally set for what would be keen competition. Among the 18, Aziza, Cher, the announcer, Donella, Kidsight, Miguel, Adonijah, Biggie Irie, Classic, John King, Mikey, Serenader, Adrian Clark, Blood, Crystal Cummins Beckles, Sammy G, Apache, and Billboard. Nine of them will face reigning monarch Ian Webster next Friday, August the 1st, at Kensington Oval. Aja says the standard of the finals will be raised to a higher level, including a tribute to Emancipation Day, which is also August the 1st. We are going to have a full ground rehearsal um, on the Wednesday night at, at Kensington, where everybody involved in the show, media in terms of, 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 of from a production standpoint, the security forces, the disaster, everything will be practiced on that day. That is the idea. So that on the day itself, People won't be coming and asking questions or, or, or not sure what they're going to do. So the whole production standard, you want to take to a whole different level. He says Trinidad's Calypso monarch Chucky will perform at the event. Such a range about having a place now for the last maybe four or five years with the junior monarchs. But for the first time this year, that will be uh, put in place for the senior monarchs. So you could, the Trinidadian monarch will be performing at our finals this year. The Trinidad Monarch from this year are uh, 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 Chucky, you know. Well, should there be rain, the finals will be held at the gymnasium. Finance Minister Chris Sinclair has denied government is buying any of the houses at Coverley. He told the lower house last night that instead, the National Housing Corporation gets a percentage of the income earned from each sale. According to him, under the agreement, the NHC provides the land, but the contractor is solely responsible for selling the homes. The records show, Mr. Speaker, sir, again, in this economic environment, that 400 houses have been sold, huh? Over how much? But he said over 400. But I say 400 houses have been sold. And I am saying, I am saying, well, you know, you know everything. I am saying, based on the figures, I saw that 400 houses were sold. And even if it were 200 in this environment, that is a lot. Opposition St. James Central MP Kerry Simmons is suggesting government get the necessary procedures in place to, so that agricultural trade under the EPA can become a reality. This included getting the correct laboratory in place. So that we can test and verify the status and quality of proteins sorted out. 
It is a humbug. It is as much of a humbug, Mr. Speaker, sir, and an impediment to progress in trade in agricultural commodities as is the failure, sir, of the Attorney General of Barbados to get a piece of legislation before this honorable house so that we can replace the chief medical officer, sir, with the chief veterinary officer in order to satisfy the European Union's requirement for export of um, meat products. Simmons says the implementation process has to be led by the private sector rather than government, as is currently happening. He adds that in order to move the EPA forward, stakeholders need to understand and buy into that agreement. We'll have more news ahead, but first, time for you to get interactive. We want to hear from you tonight on the question, do you believe Barbados penalties for child abuse offenders are adequate? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results at the end of the news. Let's go, Gallup. Let's go. Right, next 25th coming up soon. Just soon. Move on here. Let's go. Keep on. Keep moving. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Move it. Yeah, yeah, man. Man, it's only for one night, man. Yes, yes, one it's one night. night, but it's a special night, a big night. Move you, it, man. You understand what we got there? Huh? I know, I know. We got the best of the best. We talking about all the champions all the years, 40 years of champions. We talking about all those who won the Piggly Croc, who won the Soka Monarch, the Sweet Soka, and the Lord March. We talking about Queen Regis coming home for this one. Gallop. We talking about Alison Hunt, and all those people. Also, we got Mikey Gabby, we got Ray Bassett, right? Well, you know, we got Rasta, we got Edmund Yerrell, and Rick. All those people are going to be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. What makes me call sitting again? Listen, is the NCS taking us down memory lane with the Voice of Barbados 40th anniversary Monarch Saint concert? And it's going to be right here at the National Stadium, 8 p.m. sharp, first night, the 25th. Patrick, I'm talking about forward by the floor. Bah, yo, that's all real good, yeah. I think I get all the watch, man. Watch, 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 watch. This is the watch you got to leave it. Ready? Oh, let's go, Gallop. Let's go. Oh. Nothing wrong. The police time here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What, what the hell is that, Gallop? Let's go. I said push out, not push away. What the hell is that? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You want this fun for me? Pride and unity every year, I swear it gets sweeter, sweeter. Come for pop over. <laughs> Energy from Africa. Barbados budding film industry has produced its first psychological thriller. It's called Too Smart, written and co-directed by Shakira Bourne, who says it brings a new and surprising approach to its audience. She gives a preview of what the film is about. Too Smart is a psychological thriller starring Elsa Hines, George Gill, and Saran Lashley. And it's Barbara's first psychological thriller is about a hitchhiker and a disgruntled married couple who are trapped in a food van during a tropical storm. And as the night goes on, it's revealed that relationships aren't what, are, what they expect it to be. And they're really trying to outsmart each other. And that's where we get the tagline, uh, one smart dad at two smart dad, two smart door. Well, the other director, Ricky Redmond, says the film is unpredictable. It's about entertainment. It's a thriller. It's something that you're not going to expect what happens next throughout. Every, every 30 seconds to a minute, you're, you're going to be like, oh, I can't believe this. Don't even try to predict it. And that, that's, that's the way, that's just basically what we're doing. We, we're bringing out a movie where we're trying a different genre locally. I think we did comedy before, and um, I know most of the Beijing productions are usually comedy or kind of mixed action. We wanted something that was a bit more cerebral. 
He says steps are already in place for the movie to compete regionally as well as internationally. It is expected to open tomorrow at the Olympus Theatre at 7 p.m. The two Bulgarians held last year for stealing over $300,000 from ATMs across the island reappeared in court yesterday. The two, Vladimir Momchilov and Krasimir Yanikiev, pleaded guilty earlier this year to one count each of money laundering and intent to commit theft. They were sentenced to three years in prison for money laundering. But having already spent 277 days on remand, the time was discounted. They will now spend the remaining two years and 88 days. Yanikiev was also ordered to pay $150,000 forthwith or spend two years in jail, while Momchilov was ordered to pay $200,000 forthwith or face a similar time in prison. Both men were also sentenced to 18 months on the second count of having equipment to commit theft. With the 277 days already spent on remand again being discounted, leaving 268 more days to be served, the custodial sentences were suspended for three years. Current and prospective patients of the Maria Holder Diabetes Clinic in Warrens will now be able to have quicker results from their blood tests. It comes as the health care facility received a Piccolo Express chemical analyzer from Brydon's Stokes today. Chairman of the Barbados Diabetes Foundation, Dr. Oscar Jordan, says the equipment, which is valued over $34,000, will reduce the time it takes to have patients' test results reduced from several days to under 20 minutes. Dr. Jordan says the machine, which can complete over 30 tests, will also help the clinic in its mandate of offering comprehensive treatment to its patients. Uh, epitomized what the Diabetes Foundation is about. It's a new concept in diabetes management where the team function offers a holistic approach to diabetes management. And part of that, as you say quite rightly, is the assessment of patients, the biochemical assessments, where we can do on-the-spot testing of uh, blood sugar and other indices which are important to the overall management. Meantime, Director of Brydon's Stokes, Michael Marshall, says the donation is part of his company's commitment to health improvement programs across the island. The Diabetes Foundation in this new establishment has certainly brought a new dimension to the treatment of the diabetic patient in providing a very holistic approach. And part of that um, not only involves the treatment of the feet through the podiatrist, the education of which they have here on, on location. Regional news just ahead, but first, don't forget, we want to hear from you on this question. Do you believe Barbados penalties for child abuse offenders are adequate?